Hello folks. We're here at the Spring Hill Ranch in Chase County. It's one of the most interesting ways to rediscover the Wild West of the 19th century. Back in 1878, Stephen F. Jones, who was a Tennessee-born Southern cattleman who had practiced ranching in Texas and Colorado, got the idea of buying a big ranch in the Flint Hills of Kansas in which he would bring cattle from the west, from Colorado, and from Texas, and fatten them for shipment to the east on the nearby Santa Fe Railroad. The beautiful limestone house that we have behind me was built about 1881. It cost about $25,000. It was made of hand-cut local limestone. The nearby barn also done in the Second Empire style, is three stories. It is a magnificent structure. Back after the Civil War, there was a surplus of Longhorn cattle in Texas, some nine million by estimates. There was no way to get these cattle to market. There was no railroad that ran from, let's say, Chicago or New York into Texas. But the Santa Fe Railroad was expanding across Kansas and the Kansas Pacific across northern Kansas through Abilene. A Chicago businessman by the name of Joseph McCoy got the idea of persuading Texas herders to drive their cattle up to Kansas and then they would be boarded at the railheads for shipment to the livestock auctions in Kansas City and Chicago. Well, this worked for Abilene and then for Newton and Wichita, Ellsworth and Dodge City. Those are the most famous of the old cattle towns to which the wild Texas cowboys came, shot their guns, enjoyed a good time and retired. What Stephen Jones and the other cattle baron who came to Chase County discovered was that there was a more permanent basis for a Texas-Kansas connection. And it was based on feeding cattle here in the winter time and during the off season to fatten them for the market. When prices were higher, they would be shipped to the east on the Santa Fe Railroad. Stephen Jones and others of his stripe including English investors who came in and established the 101 Ranch on nearby Diamond Creek, inaugurated the practice of foreign and absentee investment in Chase County. It was a prelude to the modern cattle industry that would emerge in which Flint Hills cattle now marketed worldwide you can buy steaks that have been grazed in the Flint Hills, in Russia and China and elsewhere. Jones's ranch has over 25 miles of stone fences covering about 7,000 acres on the ranch. Back when the herds were coming up from Texas, the local farmers discovered that their cattle were dying if they had contact with the Longhorns from Texas. They were concerned about something called Texas fever and pressure mounted from the local farmers on the legislature to have the big cattle owners and grazers erect fences around their property. Well, there wasn't much timber in this area, so most of the fences had to be built out of local limestone rocks. But the net result was that Stephen Jones was able to improve the quality of his stock by isolating them from the flow of general cattle on the open range. And he brought in Herefords and Durhams and Galloways from England to improve the breeding and the quality of the stock grown in the Flint Hills. We're here in Strong City, Kansas, a great place to understand the late 19th century cattle trade. Towns like Newton, Abilene, 
Dodge City, Wichita, and Ellsworth may be more famous, but Strong City was a major player in the shipment of Texas cattle to the east. In the summer of 1871, shortly after the railroad station here in Strong City, then known as Cottonwood North, opened, some 30,000 Texas Longhorns assembled for shipment to eastern markets. Strong City on the Santa Fe Railroad. It was named for William Barstow Strong, who became president of the Santa Fe Railroad, a Vermonter, a man built the Santa Fe from a regional railroad into a national one, stretching across the continent. In the course of the 1870s, 1880s, and 1890s, Chase County became a major player in the cattle trade. A place called Bazaar, about 10 miles away on a spur of the Santa Fe, was actually the largest shipper of cattle early in the 20th century up until the early 1950s. At that point, trucks began to ship cattle and there were no longer the long drives from the ranches to the shipping heads like Strong City, Abilene, and others. I'm here in the Chase County Historical Society with Don Sisson, the curator. Don, we're trying to rediscover the Wild West of the 19th century. My impression is Chase was pretty wild at that time. It was. We had lots of cattle drives come through and we had saloons and that brought in the rowdy cowboys, I believe. Oh my. And that was particularly so in Strong City, wasn't it? It was. They were actually noted in the paper as being the rowdy town of the county. Were there any people hung on bridges locally? There was. It actually had to do with the uh, postal system, but uh, well, the gentleman that didn't get the job out uh, didn't like it very well. He uh, found the gentleman and uh, killed him. And he was taken to jail here at our local courthouse, but the prominent local people busted him out. Hmm. They didn't get in trouble, but they did hang him from the railroad bridge, and uh, that was kind of the end of the story. <laughs> well, oftentimes when they hung people, they also shot them, but I judge in this case they didn't. <laughs> no, no, not in this case. <laughs> Well, Chase County is really the center of the Flint Hills, and the Flint Hills in the 1870s and 1880s were considered part of an avenue for horse thieves that ran from Junction City on the north to the Oklahoma border, which was then Indian Territory on the south. Do you know anything about uh, horse thieves or cattle thieves in Chase County? mostly was in our southern section which notes Matfield Green a lot mm. and Mr. Robler was a prominent uh, gentleman in the Matfield Green area and it is noted that he had heads of cattle stolen and he chased them all the way from here to Burlington. He did catch up with them and they were arrested in Matfield Green. It's my understanding that cattle thieves and horse thieves often weren't convicted when there was a trial. I was looking at one episode in the 1880s and found that they were acquitted by the juries here, and that may have been one of the reasons that local citizens took to using Judge Lynch and a rope to settle the problem of horse thieves. You also have to understand that a lot of the county also didn't become law until mm. in the 70s. And so previous to that, yes, they took it into their own hands. Mm. Uh, Colonel Samuel Woods, they said he didn't know how to break a law because he wrote them all. <laughs> so he also was in charge of, um, you know, a lot of our laws that we have here. Yeah, he so. was one of the founders of Chase County and quite a, quite a character. <laughs> you either loved him or hated him. <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite stories to tell about Samuel Wood is we actually had Falls and we had Cottonwood. We didn't become Cottonwood Falls until like the later 1870s and that is because Isaac Alexander had started Cottonwood Falls in 1857. Colonel Wood then came to town in 1859 and he decided he needed to make his own town. He got the name of Cottonwood Falls because he did the proper paperwork and Isaac Alexander didn't. 
Now, the downtown here really got constructed because Mr. Alexander owned all this land and he gave the land for the courthouse. So then that's where the downtown ended up being, was between here and the river and not in Mr. Wood's section. It's interesting that they placed the train station about two miles north of the downtown. And it's my understanding that the Santa Fe didn't want to build two bridges across the Cottonwood River, even though the citizens of Cottonwood Falls had voted uh, to uh, provide bonds to support the railroad's expansion. We were up a little earlier to the Stephen Jones Spring Hill Ranch. I'm sure you visited that and probably have a lot of questions about it routinely from visitors to the society. We do. A lot of them haven't made it out there yet. They come here first and we send them on out. Uh, you know, one of the stories, and it's still a puzzle as to whether it was there before or after Mr. Jones built his home, is that there was a tunnel between the house and the barn. And as I did a little bit more reading on this, I guess it was a two mile tunnel, but they think it's collapsed. Now, whether Mr. Jones had anything to do with smuggling slavery in or whether it was used just to take the employees back and forth between the barn and the house, we don't know. But he came here because he was from Colorado and had uh, a large cattle industry there. And uh, he found that our land here suited the cattle really well. And he built the, the famous Z-Bar Ranch or Paul Grass Preserve now. So. Well, he was originally from Tennessee, and I think his he wife was. was from Alabama, and he'd spent time in Texas during the Civil War, and some think that uh, he may have had uh, former slaves working for him at the uh, uh, Spring Hill Ranch. If we could only prove it. <laughs> Make for a good story. <laughs> We're here in the Chase County Courthouse. It's the oldest operating courthouse in Kansas. <laughs> A beautiful building done in the Second Empire style. And we're also here in the courtroom in the Chase County Courthouse, a significant point. Because when this building was constructed, oftentimes cattle thieves and horse thieves met the end of a hemp rope, not justice meted out by a judge and jury. Times have changed. Chase County is much tamer. But in the 1870s and 1880s and 1860s, there were over 95 hangings in Kansas of horse thieves and cattle thieves because the frontier was relatively unorganized and the judicial system wasn't effective. Many times those accused of crimes were led off by juries of their peers that feared reprisals. Things have changed, and the Chase County Courthouse is a beautiful structure that anyone interested in the Wild West should visit. Today we've had a chance to visit the Flint Hills in Kansas, an area with cowboys, traders, settlers, and a very fabled history. It has brought excitement to revisiting the West, and I hope you will want to visit the Flint Hills and keep on discovering as we have.